long time in the ICT industry, Adam. Tell me about that. So uh, it's, it's always good to, talk, to uh, start with a question about myself. Okay, yeah, because, um, plenty of material. I'm, a, I'm an authority on that, right? But uh, I've been a long, long time in the ICT industry. You don't get this grey, uh, you know, without being around for quite a long time. But uh, probably uh, almost uh, three and a half decades. And over that time, I've worked with a range of multinationals. Um, five, actually, in fact, and some Irish indigenous companies. Um, I think currently I work for Cisco, and I've been there 13 years. I'm not superstitious, so uh, 13 years is a good number, and I intend to stay there another little while yet, you know. But uh, it's been an interesting journey. Oh, my goodness. So uh, over the three decades, tell me about what most surprised you in that time. Um, so what's, what surprised me, uh, I suppose, is um, really the, uh, what, what has changed so much is the pervasiveness of technology, right? The fact that technology is all around us. We can't do without it anymore. You know, like I, I go back and uh, looking at you, I'm sure you do too, right? Uh, to a time where I can remember the very first time I saw a web browser. Right, and it was at all text-based. It was 1994. It was Netscape, okay, and 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 that was the really the time of the first commercial web browser. And if you f move forward a few years, it was 1997 when Google launched. They happened to do it on my birthday, which was uh, nice of them, but uh, I don't think there was any <laughs> connection there at all. Um, and then you go forward a little bit further. 2004 was Facebook. 2007 was the first iPhone, and um, since then, it's been astonishing, the pickup. And that's the second thing I've mentioned, you know, it's the pace of change is picking up. It's only in the last four or five years that we've started talking about things like machine learning, um, you know, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality. We're talking about things like blockchain, like they've been around forever, you know, but they haven't. They've only been around for a while. And I, I think as well, the third thing I'd mention is the complexity of all this, right? It is something which perhaps we might talk about a little bit later, but uh, it, it genuinely is a much more complex world. And we at Cisco are trying to actually focus in on that and reduce that level of complexity. So how does Cisco handle these challenges? So Cisco is a, a very, very large company. Like we have about 70,000 people working for us. They're the ones on the books, right? We have uh, probably the same amount in terms of contractors. So it's a large company. Uh, it's been around since 1984. And if you've read the book, right, George Orwell, it's, that's pure coincidence, nothing to do with us. But uh, 1984 to now has been uh, a huge change. And I think, um, you know, one, one of the uh, slides that I, I remember actually uh, hit me for straight in the face the first time I saw it was how our competition has changed through the decades. And many of the companies that we would have competed against in the 80s and the 90s are no longer there, right? So it's changed, it's become more complex. Um, and I, but, but how, we, how we've managed to keep pace and how we do things is we have to, as many companies do, we have to continuously innovate. And we, we innovate in five different ways. We build, so, you know, that, that's, we're engineers at the heart of it. You know, we're really the protocol converters, but we've built some fabulous technologies like, for example, one is telepresence, okay? And if you have never seen telepresence, it's really high quality video conferencing solution, which really sort of shook up the industry. But, it, you know, we, we built that from the ground up, including all the codecs. We even dictated what paint went on the wall, right? But then we moved into the, sec the second area of innovation is we buy. Cisco is a very, very acquisitive company. Um, we uh, have bought a huge number of companies 
uh, starting in, I think it was 1993, with a company called Crescendo Communications, which really brought us in to the switching and routing market that we are probably best known for. Um, but down through the years, bought companies like Webex, Meraki, um, and many, many others. And if you, you know, today, though, if you look back, even over the last two to three years, most of the companies that we've acquired have either been software companies, security-based companies, and increasingly now companies involved in things like artificial intelligence. Uh, and we're integrating that into what we do. So that, that's the, the buy bit. Um, we actually have, uh, we recently uh, just made our 200th acquisition. Okay, and some of those companies I mentioned are very large. One, one actually, we did acquire a company in Ireland in uh, 2012. It was a little company called Think Smart Technologies, and uh, they, it was a spin-off from UCC. And, but they had developed some clever um, software that enabled uh, analytics to be done in large-scale Wi-Fi areas. So we, we acquired those. The third area would be partnerships, okay? And uh, we, we have some really strong partnerships. And you know, some of the headline ones would be like, uh, I was talking a little bit earlier about the partnership that we have with Apple. Apple's a curious company to do business with. They're quite secretive in how they do things, but what our engineering teams have been working very, very closely together to uh, develop a new experience. But we also partner with companies like your own. Right, and uh, you know, and we're coming up together with new and innovative solutions like that. And then the last two areas, I take them together. You know, we invest uh, and we co-develop. So we have a, a 2.2 billion dollar fund for investment, and usually that's tied to um, things like um, digitization projects that'll make a difference to a country. So, for example, in the UK at the moment, we have a project running which is uh, developing um, high-speed Wi-Fi for trains. Have you ever been on a train and tried to stay connected? You know, it's really difficult. So we're, we're actually working very solidly on that, and hopefully that'll be something which will really produce dividends over the next few years. So there's clearly a lot going on. Absolutely a lot going on. So what's Cisco's technology strategy then overall? So um, our technology strategy really is, is really what we want. Like we're, we're involved in so many different things. We're, we're lovingly referred to as the plumbers, right? Because people know us best for the routing and switching. But in fact, actually, there is so many different areas that we're involved in. And so we, we talk now about really building a platform for digital business. And that, that's sort of centered around five different pillars. And the first one is security. And who doesn't want to talk about security? And who doesn't want a situation where, you know, all of their business is really secure? And, but when you look at that industry, it's very, very fractured. Um, it, like, for example, for us to be, we, we, we can be, uh, call out the fact that we're number one in, in a lot of different areas. In security, actually, we're the largest security provider in the world, but nobody really knows that. But we have a small percentage of the market, and that's largely because of the fact that it's fractured. But if you, if you look at companies like, um, or sorry, the the type of security risk that we come across, we have a, have a group of people within Cisco which we refer to as Talos. And they actually provide the intelligence behind all our security products. They see something like 600 billion emails every month. It's phenomenal, 600 billion. And 86% of that is spam. And 8% of that is malware. And then, they're, they're all the time blocking threats. So you can't buy Talos, but when, you, when we sort of work with partners like yourself, we put together an integrated strategy where the security products work together and you have Talos in the background. The, I won't go through the whole strategy, but I'll mention one other thing. 
And that, that is where we're trying to reinvent networking, which is a big statement from a company like Cisco. But the recognition here is that we can't continue to do things in the way that we've done them in the past because it just doesn't scale. When you add hundreds, thousands, maybe tens of thousands of devices to your network, you no longer have a situation where you can actually manually manage those. So it has to go down an automated route, right? So we, we talk about actually a situation where perhaps you have today one IT person managing 200 devices. But we envisage a situation where that actually could be one person to a million. And it could be a situation where we actually end up with self-driving networks. Like it's, it's cute to talk about self-driving cars and ships and things like that, right? But we're actually now starting to believe in, in the concept of self-driving networks. But fundamentally, it all comes back to the user experience. How are we actually going to improve the user experience for people? And that's where we're focused. So how, what do you think will be the next biggest innovation area in that? In that? So well, I, I think at conferences like this and uh, other conferences, the, um, I suppose the main talking point is artificial intelligence. You know, and and we're, we're working on that as well. One of the companies we acquired quite recently is a company called MindMeld. And uh, we have, um, we're already uh, integrating that technology into our collaboration portfolio. So MindMeld actually is, is going to become a, a voice assistant for collaboration. So let me give you a scenario, right? You walk into your meeting room and um, immediately you say, you know, tell the conference system to uh, start up my meeting. The conference system will look at you and through biometrics know that this is Adam that's just walked in. Go look up your calendar, identify what meeting you're talking about, set up the meeting. You haven't touched anything. Now perhaps maybe other people come into the conference room. Um, and again, through perhaps facial recognition, we'd be able to identify who those people are, maybe adjust the heating in the room, right? Because now there's more people in the room, right? Uh, and when the experience for people looking in from the other side would be that they see you, but they also see your name tagged in a virtual sense. So that's our vision. We're almost there. Right, but that, that's the sort of development that uh, we're driving through things like AI. So what do you think will be the biggest challenge in the next few years then? <laughs> so there's many, right? Uh, complexity is one that I mentioned earlier, but uh, without doubt, you know, the, the hot topic for most tech companies, and we would be no different, is, uh, is where we get the skills from, right? Uh, so it's, it's really important that um, we focus on that. And uh, my, my role is actually a UK and Ireland role. So I, I lead a team of what some companies call pre-sales engineers, we call systems engineers across the, the UK and Ireland for Cisco. But one of the other hats that I wear is that uh, I'm a sponsor for all our early and career programs. And because we have a bigger scale in the UK, they're largely focused there. Uh, so we have an, a, um, an internship program, we have an apprenticeship program that we run, and we have a graduate program over there. So there's a big, big focus, and the people that we pull in are really the, the best of the best. But we can't forget as well that there has to be a balance. It's not all about early in career, okay? So the, the other thing that I'm focusing on is how do I actually get the existing engineering team to realize and to raise their skills? Because we're, we're transforming the company. We're less of a, a product-focused company to now actually becoming very definitely a software company. But we have to actually bring the engineers along with us and indeed bring our partners along with us, right? And so one of the ways that we're doing that 
is we're actually uh, through, we're, we're developing workshops and really a whole community where people can go and co-create with partners and customers alike, okay? And, and, and give them, and develop those sort of skills, get them more comfortable working in development environments. Here in Ireland, actually, one of the other hats I wear, and I've got multiple hats, but one of, one of the other hats I wear is that um, I'm a board member of an organization called Fast Track to Information Technology. And if you were here earlier, you might have seen uh, Liam Ryan speaking. And Liam uh, is the CEO of SAP in Ireland, and he's the chair of that board. And I'm on the board along with a, a number of other people. But that, that, that organization has been active for now about 19 years. And what they do is essentially they work very closely with industry to develop courses that are delivered by the educational and training boards to meet the real genuine IT vacancies that are here in Ireland. And they've recently become the um, national coordinator for the apprenticeship schemes, for the tech apprenticeship schemes. So I think that, that's, a, that's a big plus. The other one, you mentioned challenges, so the other one I mentioned is, um, is really trust. And we spoke about this a little bit earlier. And, yep. uh, and, and this, this is a particular hobby horse that I'm on because I think the industry is at an inflection point at the moment. And we really need to grab hold of this whole concept of trust. Like, uh, I'm, I really worry when I, I look at the sort of technologies that can enable and accelerate the type of fake news that you hear talked about now on a regular basis. So, and if you, if you don't know what I mean, go and have a look at some of the um, audio editing software that's available now. You, you can actually create a situation where you can have a voice um, sort of clip of somebody speaking who is well known to your ear, but they didn't say what you've actually got them to say. Or indeed, you can do the same from a video perspective. So there's a, a great video online of some technology that has been developed. I hope I'm not doing them a disservice. I think it's in Stanford. And it's originally for, it's, it's for the, um, the cinematic industry. But they show a clip of, how, uh, of a speech that um, George Bush is giving. And they change it completely so that he says something that he never actually said. So I, I think that's a bit, little bit scary. But I'm an optimist, right? And I don't think you survived this long, the three decades in the industry without being an optimist. And I think we also have the technology which actually will try and circumvent that. And it's things like, and you've been hearing about it today, things like blockchain where we can absolutely be certain that something hasn't changed and been manipulated along the way. But I think we need to grab hold of that as an industry and we need to make sure that um, you know, we're, we're doing things in the right way. Okay, lastly, Adam, so one last question. So how are you preparing for what's coming? So from a, again, from a Cisco perspective, um, it's pretty much what I've said already. It's about innovation. It's about the need to continuously innovate. Sometimes, sometimes actually, we innovate in, in uh, different sort of ways to how other companies do it. One of the disadvantages of being Cisco, of being a big, big company like we are, is sometimes you get mired in red tape, right? And it's difficult to do things in the way that a small company, you know, who's more nimble and agile can do. So one of the things that we did successfully down through the years is uh, we did a thing called Spin In, right? Where we funded some people who were quite clever within the organization and we said, look, you've got a great idea. Here's a, here's a bunch of money. These are the milestones, go off and do that. And if you hit those milestones, we'll bring you back in, right? That made them very successful, but it also gave us another way of innovating, which we hadn't done before. So, uh, you know, so, so that's one way. And the other way from a personal perspective 
is really just to focus on continuous learning and developing the, the people that I have, you know, that I'm working with. Okay, well, thank you very much. There's an awful lot there, and uh, thank you for taking the time. You're welcome. Thank you.